Strong of Dominican Republic to give volunteers handle medical kits and needy families in La Lumana. Tsuji volunteers in Vietnam and Cambodia who volunteer training seminars for those that wish to walk the Tsuji path. Welcome to Dar Headlines. I'm Helen Liao. Thank you for joining us. First up in the Dominican Republic, as part of the celebration for the 15th anniversary of the Tsuji Dominican Republic Liaison Office, a medical kit distribution was held in the community of La Romana. Upon seeing how residents were in need of simple and commonly used medication, volunteers decided to provide them with these items and also made sure residents know how to use them properly. I previously came across a child with a bit of a fever, and they said because they don't have money to buy medicine, they used a bucket of water with herbs that we couldn't recognize to wipe the child's head. The water wasn't even clean, so my heart really ached. We decided then to distribute emergency medical kits to them. Master Zhen Yin hopes that besides caring for Tsidi's children, that we must also take care of their families. It is just like what Sister Lu Rong said, the medical kits will run out one day, so volunteers in the Dominican Republic will need to carry out the follow-up work. For children who are receiving their first dental treatment, this is a nerve-wracking moment. On site to help is 13-year-old Liu Qi Yu, who assists by filling out everyone's information. I tell the other children not to worry and that it won't hurt much. We couldn't pull his teeth out because we haven't been able to anesthetize him. We have already tried three times. By turning their large-scale free clinic into a medical kit distribution, Tsuji volunteers hope to provide basic and commonly used medications to families and also help them learn how to properly use them. Besides looking at the picture, we do recommend that parents ask someone who can read to confirm whether the medication is suitable for their condition. Following the distribution, volunteers visit residents to see if the right information has been absorbed. In the days ahead, volunteers vow to continue to provide love and care to ensure a better and brighter future for the residents of La Romana. As part of the celebration for the 15th birthday of the Tsuji Dominican Republic Liaison Office, nearly 300 participants came to attend an evening festival. Students at the Tsuji La Romana School put on performances, while Tsuji volunteers from the United States, Honduras and El Salvador also joined in the event to offer their well wishes. Dale, 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 no pierdas el vino. Dale, 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 no pierdas el camino. Para Suchi de República Dominicana, feliz aniversario con mucho cariño. El Salvador. Les deseamos feliz aniversario a nuestros hermanos Suchi dominicanos. De ternura les venimos a felicitar. In the Dominican Republic, we often see female volunteers take on male volunteer roles. It is really quite brave of them to do so. In a blink of an eye, Tsuji's Dominican Republic liaison office is 15 years old. On the night of the celebration, U.S. New Jersey Chapter Director Lin Lu Rong thanked former and present director Tai Tzu Li and Zhang Tzu Hui respectively for their bravery in leading a mostly female team of volunteers in carrying out Tsuji's charitable deeds in the country. These sisters have really put in a lot of their time into spreading Tsuji, and like me, they are getting old, but seeing how Tsuji has flourished and taken root here really comforts me. Felicia, a proud graduate of La Romana Tsuji Elementary, entertains the audience by performing the Chinese song The Universal Three Knows perfectly. Putting their hearts into their performance, the performers look forward to 15 more years of Tsuji in the Dominican Republic.
to the one who made us brothers and sisters, to the one who gathered us here, who made us humans and who made us useful. Mr. Zhen Yan. To these planting roots here and adapting to the local lifestyle, because in these past few years, there has been a loss of members from the Taiwanese business community. So we have been training more local volunteers. To help celebrate this momentous occasion, Suji volunteers from the United States, Honduras and El Salvador all came to offer their blessings. In Lesotho, as 40% of the country's residents live in poverty, Tsuji volunteers come to regular home visits to bring love and care to those in need. Recently, under the leadership of local volunteers, Tsuji expanded their home visitations to even more remote areas of Lesotho. On their recent round of home visitations in the landlocked African country of Lesotho, Tsuji volunteers and local volunteers come across a road blocked by mud and rocks. Me too. Me. Mud and rocks. Let's see how to walk up the path. Undeterred by the obstacles before them, one by one, the team of bodhisattvas get out of their car and walks into the lives of these villagers. Nadan, who wears a pair of sunglasses and suffers from a leg disability, uses his arms to help him move about. Seeing the angels clad in blue and white for the first time, Nadan is quite curious about who has come calling. The volunteers' next stop is a small community called Tababo Siu, where local volunteers, on their own, distributed 50 packs of rice and blankets. Among the recipients was KK So, a former polio sufferer who was very guarded at first. When volunteers first arrived and asked to take a picture with him, he refused because many other organizations had been here and taken pictures, but then nothing came of it. Using love and patience, local volunteers tear down the walls in KK So's heart. And soon, everyone is having a laugh like old friends. <laughs> in Vietnam and Cambodia, Tsuji volunteers organize training seminars for trainees who wish to join the Buddhist NGO. At the training held in Vietnam's Ho Chi Minh City, volunteers join their counterparts in Taiwan via video conferencing, and some 40 volunteers in Cambodia also attended the training held at the local liaison office. <laughs> Knowing what etiquette must be presented by TG volunteers, participants break into laughter upon seeing the wrong behavior. Here at a volunteer training seminar in Cambodia, trainees are gaining wisdom and inspiration through such events. K recipient Mr. Chen once lived a luxurious lifestyle, and though life has turned out to be different than expected, he remains positive. The reason why I ended up where I am now is probably because of all the karma I created in my past life and all the bad habits I adopted. I'm happy to accept it all. <laughs> To spread seeds of love further, the Tsuji Cambodia Liaison Office held their first training seminar here to help 13 local volunteers gain a better understanding of the Buddhist NGO. We are gathering in different parts of the world in different time zones to study together. Do you know how many locations are connected through video conferencing? More than 30. Meanwhile, 40 volunteers from the Tsuji Vietnam Liaison Office joined their counterpart in Taiwan's Northern District at the 2014 Tsuji Commissioner and Sitten Training Seminar. Those who do not understand Mandarin uses a headphone to listen to a translation. 
Among the participants, Fan Wenjun from the Haidong Province Association for the Blind took a two-hour flight to Ho Chi Minh City to attend the event and was much inspired upon learning of city's ten precepts. I personally must work even harder to realize Master Zhenyan's philosophy. I am very grateful. With the same goal of making a difference to society and reaching out to all dark corners, city volunteers worldwide vow to remain diligent in walking the city path. In Taiwan, Taipei City Hospital medical staff recently treated nine-year-old Chen for her congenital scoliosis, also receiving treatment at the hospital was Wu Yi, whose legs and hands needed amputation. After undergoing three successful operations, Yi Yi and her mother seized the chance to show their deep thanks to the medical staff. <laughs> Two days before leaving the hospital, Wu Yi Yi and her mother come to express their thanks and say goodbye to the nurses who have tended to Yi Yi over the past few months. <laughs> After suffering from a cold for more than a year, Yi Yi's legs and hands became infected and required amputation. I was in the hospital to look after her and when I saw her hands and legs, I just couldn't hold back my tears. I just couldn't. In March 2013, with the assistance of city volunteers, Yi Yi was transferred to the Taipei City Hospital to undergo three operations. The medical team first removed the dead tissue in her limbs before amputating both her hands and legs. However, following a skin graft, Yi Yi suffered from an inflammation of the pancreas. After we amputated her left hand and leg, she had a fever. However, that's normal because children are prone to fevers. Knowing that she will be going home soon, Yi Yi is all smiles. Before she leaves the hospital, doctors give her one more checkup and discuss her future rehabilitation. Later, Yi Yi's mother gives doctors a thank you card to express her gratitude. Although Yi Yi lost her hands and legs, she is still able to feel the love around her. <laughs> Thanks to the love and care of city volunteers and medical staff, Yi Yi and her family members have gained strength to move on. As they know, no matter what difficulties they face ahead, city will always be around. Also at the Taipei City Hospital, nine-year-old Chen is here to receive treatment for her congenital scoliosis. Currently, Chen is being looked after by her grandparents in Taiwan, as her parents are in China for business. She often caught colds or suffer from respiratory problems, and she missed several classes. Sometimes her grandparents had to send her to the hospital at midnight. When we received the call, we would travel back to Taiwan immediately. Chen's parents later sent her to the Taipei City Hospital for treatment. There, Dr. Zhen Xiaozhu and his medical team carried out corrective surgery on the girl's spine. Now she is growing normally and is able to move freely. She suffered from congenital scoliosis, which left her pelvis tilted and legs uneven. We carry out corrective surgery on her spine. After the operation, her body balance has improved greatly. Before Chen leaves the hospital, the superintendent and Dr. Zhen Xiaozhu hand out a few gifts. We wish you good health and hope you will grow up tall and healthy. Remember to help those in need. In return, Chen also hands out handmade gifts and cards to thank the medical personnel. Thank you, Dr. Zhen, for treating me. 
Thank you everyone for changing my life for the better. Wow. With the medical staff's blessings and encouragement, Chen is ready to move on towards a brighter future ahead. Also in Taiwan, following the first corrective surgery to treat her deformed knees, Chen Tuanzhi from Xiamen, China, recently underwent a second surgery on her other leg at the Hualien City Hospital. Under the guidance of Honorary Superintendent Chen Yinghe and his medical team, the second corrective surgery was also a success. <laughs> Prior to her second corrective surgery, Siji volunteers are there to offer Chen Tuanzhi their blessings. Chen said she is very confident in the skills of her medical team. <laughs> this time, Honorary Superintendent Chen Yinghe and his medical team plan to straighten Tuanzhi's left leg. Despite the experience gained from the previous operation, Dr. Chen said this surgery will be even more difficult than the first one. Not only did her bones deform, but also her peripheral ligaments and muscles turn stiff. Suffering from congenital knee hyperextension, Chen Tuanzhi has her left knee hyperextended 150 degrees. Following a three-hour operation, Chen's leg was straightened successfully. In today's surgery, we successfully made a 130-degree correction. That's the result we expected in our pre-surgery assessment. Seeing her daughter safe and stable in the recovery room, Chen Tuanzhi's mother can finally relax. In three weeks following, the medical team will carry out another operation to treat Chen's ankle. The Cixin Club of National Kaohsiung University of Applied Sciences recently held a two-day camp for children from remote regions, giving these youngsters a weekend of fun and learning. Running the camp was Cixin Guo Yijin and Cixin volunteer Jiang Yuying, who supported each other every step of the way to ensure they even went off without a hitch. <laughs> Using their full concentration, these campers are trying to move marbles with chopsticks or stack blocks with one hand. <laughs> Another activity the campers work together, leaving a lasting impression on the importance of teamwork. <laughs> These children from remote areas are enjoying a fun two-day camp ran by the Cixin Club of the National Kaohsiung University of Applied Sciences. Many of the college students that volunteer their weekend are first-timers and found room for improvement in their performances. This is my first time helping. I didn't do so well. I think I have plenty of room for improvement. I think the next time we have another event like this, we should put more effort into the details. We came across many situations, and it was a good opportunity for us to learn from them. Although the camp was short, it was one filled with learning for both young and old. Holding the microphone and leading everyone in a sign language song is the camper's promoter, Cixin Guo Yijin. Her liveliness today is in stark contrast to her shy former self. I think where I have changed the most is in the past people would feel that I'm cold, but after being in Cixi and receiving so much love, one starts to want to spread that love further. Now my classmates will say that I'm always smiling. Guo's spiritual sustenance is Cixi volunteer Jiang Yuying, who is like a second mother to the young girl. I will tell Mama Yu in my problems, no matter if it's a situation in a Cixin club or how I am feeling. I've been a mentor to many Cixins for some 20 years now, and I'm really thankful for these young bodhisattvas. They have taught me how to be more flexible in my ways. Supporting each other on the Cixi path, the camp held by Guo Yijin and other Cixins spreads the love they receive to children from remote regions. In the United States, as the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women is holding their annual meeting in New York, the Cixi Foundation also held seminars based on the topic of the light of hope, to which it invites women who are role models in rural communities to speak.
During the 2010 Haiti earthquake, many female disaster victims worked to rebuild their lives and in the process joined city's ranks in spreading love to those in greater need. I see many female volunteers playing very important roles in Siji. It is an opportunity to allow us to better ourselves while helping others. This is why I am willing to follow Tsuji's footstep in serving our community in Haiti. As the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women is holding their annual meeting in New York, the Tsuji Foundation also sees the chance to organize seminars to which two volunteers from Haiti were invited to speak of their experiences since joining the charity organization. Meanwhile, two volunteers from the Philippines also share their TG experiences through video conferencing. Among them, Jennifer Celisa, who was once addicted to gambling, spoke of how she became a member of the Buddhist NGO. The story behind every volunteer went to show that as long as one has the heart to give, anything is possible. In our next report, we go to Taiwan's Yunling to meet sixth grader Ling Jianming. With his mother no longer around and father at a nursing home due to a severe illness. Ling and his siblings are left to look after their 80-year-old grandmother themselves. As Ling's sister is a sole breadwinner of the family, Ling decided to take on full responsibility for looking after his grandmother. For this video act, he later won recognition from the Taiwan Fund for Children and Families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Checking on his grandmother as soon as he arrives home from school is sixth grader Ling Jianming. Next, he prepares a cup of warm milk for his grandmother to drink. Other than accompany his grandmother, Ling Jianming also entertains her by playing his Chinese flute. <laughs> Ling's 80-year-old grandma had a stroke two years ago, and his father is currently living at a nursing home. With his mother passing away at a young age, Ling and his siblings are left to look after their grandmother. I sleep on the chair, so when my grandmother calls me, I can be by her side. When the weather is nice, I will bring her out on her wheelchair, so she can enjoy the weather too. With so many children in the family, Ling Jianming was nearly given away. Thankfully, Ling's grandmother insisted on keeping him by her side. If we have good meals, we can eat together and vice versa. He is such a caring child. As Ling's eldest sister is the sole breadwinner, Ling has taken on the responsibility of looking after their grandmother. He decided himself to look after our grandmother. He is such a sweet brother. Ling Jianming's acts of filial piety have won him recognition from the Taiwan Fund for Children and Families. Despite living in hardship, this is one family that knows as long as they stay together, the days will be filled with happiness and laughter. We go to China at the end of the show. Following the recent Kunming attack in Yunnan province, city volunteers have been mobilized to care for those affected by the incident. Thanks to volunteers' love and support, a senior that was injured decided to let go of her hatred and happily went home fully recovered. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.